All right, hey, organic chemistry. I just wanted to make like a quick helpful video on how to determine carbons and hydrogens and then essentially a molecular formula from a bond line drawing. So from our notes, we know that this is a bond line drawing of a molecule. And we're gonna see that each end and corner, like I have right here, is a carbon. So if I look at this, this has six carbons. And then eventually, later on in this video, as I explain, we're gonna see that each of these carbons can have up to four bonds. If it has less than four bonds or four lines, we must have hydrogens. So this carbon on the end only has one line drawn to it, so it needs three hydrogens there. This carbon right here, be careful, there's a double bond there. It has three lines drawn to it. If you could see it, one, two, three. There are three lines drawn to it. So that means that this carbon can only have one hydrogen. Same thing for this carbon, one hydrogen. This carbon can have two hydrogens. There are two lines drawn, drawn to it, one, two, if you could see that. And so I need to add two hydrogens to have a total of four bonds. Same for this one next to it. And then on the end, this carbon only has one line shown drawn to it, this carbon. So since it only has one line shown drawn to it, four minus one, I'm gonna have three hydrogens. And so in total, I could count how many hydrogens I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 hydrogens. And then essentially what I could do with the number of carbons and hydrogens is write a formula. This formula is gonna be C6H12. I'm gonna do that again now. First, I'm just gonna help walk you through counting carbons and then we'll do counting hydrogens. So I'll count carbons again. So here's these two structures that are bond line drawings. Every corner or edge is a carbon. So if we look at this one, this is an end or an edge, that's one. Corner, second carbon. Corner, third, another corner, fourth, another corner, fifth, another corner, sixth, another corner, seven carbons. I'll do this one over here. End, an end, that's two carbons. This one in the middle here, that's a carbon, that's three. Right here, four, five, six. This has six carbons. So in the beginning here, I'm just trying to help you show carbons. Now to remind you of some things, we have double bonds, which counts as two bonds. So like there's two carbons here. Um, and each of these carbons, as you could see, I'll highlight it, has one, two, and then I'll do another shade there. There are three bonds attached to each carbon here. Later on, when I want to put hydrogens on, it's going to need one more hydrogen. This is a triple bond, and you can see that there are three bonds here that are tied to these two carbons. Be careful. There are two carbons here. Each of those carbons have the three bonds from the triple bond, and then there's one more bond that are connected to it. So later on, we're going to see that those carbons are probably not going to need any hydrogens, because they have four bonds in total. So I'll just do some quick practice for us. I'm actually jumped to number five. We did this in the notes, but just in case, let me count how many carbons are in this structure. Remember, every corner, edge, end point is a carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did I miss any? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 carbons in this structure. Be careful. This is not a carbon. This is not a carbon. This is not a carbon. And this is certainly not a carbon. Those are oxygens that are found in the structure. These are bonds that are drawn to oxygen. If I wanted to redraw this, this would be like a carbon. 
single bound to a carbon, single bound to like another carbon, and then this would be like a double bond O. That's what this structure looks like right here, and I'm gonna highlight those oxygens so you can see where that comes from. Now let's remind us how to do hydrogens. So for hydrogens, the rule is carbon can have a total of four bonds. So some helpful tips is counting to four, count the bonds and subtraction. So count the lines, however many lines there are, subtract four, and that's how many hydrogens are needed. So if I look at this structure, let's do carbons first. You always start with carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This has 12 carbons. Let's figure out hydrogens now. Now, remember what I said, each carbon can have a total of four bonds. Those bonds are represented by a line. Remember, one bond could look like this, and there are two electrons in a bond. So just like a little recap there. However many lines there are, I subtract from four, and that's how many hydrogens I need. Let's look at this carbon on the end here. There is only one bond or one line shown drawn to it. So since there's only one line, I'll do four minus one, and I get three. So I need to have three hydrogens on this carbon. Let's do another carbon. Let's do this one. You could clearly see that there are one, two lines shown drawn to that carbon. If I do four minus two, I'll need two hydrogens on that carbon. Let me just uh, redo this here. So I need two hydrogens on this carbon. Nice. If I look at this carbon, be careful. There is one, two, three, four lines, or there are four lines, four bonds shown drawn to that carbon. If I do four minus four, I get zero. There should be no hydrogens drawn on that carbon, okay? And then let's do another carbon. Let's do maybe this one. Actually, I'm gonna go back. Let's do this one. If I look at this carbon, let me count how many lines. One, two, three. If I do four minus three, that carbon is only going to need one hydrogen. And so I could draw that in. So I only did a couple of them, but you could see that I have four different carbons in here. Either we could have a carbon that has zero hydrogens. We could have a carbon that has one hydrogen because it has three bonds. We could have a carbon that has two hydrogens because it has two bonds. Or we could have a carbon that has three hydrogens because it only has one bond. Let's do some quick practice, putting it all together. Let's figure out the number of hydrogens on each of these carbons, and then let's write a formula. Let's do this one. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got nine carbons here. Now let's look at each carbon and count the lines and convince yourself that what I'm saying is correct. If I look at this first carbon, it's only got one line, so it's gonna need three hydrogens. If I look at this next one, it's got three lines shown drawn to it. It's gonna need one hydrogen, four minus three. This one also needs three. Four minus one is three. If I look at this one, this one also needs one. It only has three bonds or three lines shown drawn to it. This carbon needs three. Four minus one is three. This carbon needs one. This carbon needs three. This carbon has two lines or two bonds connected to it. It needs two. And then finally, this one only had one bond or one line drawn to it. It needs three. And then I could count how many hydrogens I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have 20 
hydrogens, and that means this formula will be C9H20. So that was a quick recap on how to count carbons and count hydrogens. Hopefully this was helpful. Make sure you know how to do this for the rest of class this year.